do it, but shit. Oh my god. All right, same thing with the graphic products. We got uh, one of the modules that allow us, or, or uh, one of the portals that allow us to get weather information, the Aviation Digital Data Service. That's an easy Google search, ADDS. Uh, it provides just data, just weather data. This is not a full comprehensive brief, and it does not give you any NOTAM information, whereas the 1-800-WX brief does provide NOTAM information. All right, surface analysis chart, station model, weather depiction chart, composite radar image, uh, constant pressure analysis chart. We already talked a little bit about pressure analysis and surface analysis. Remember when we were talking high and low pressures and we were saying the low pressure as convection took place, the low pressure existed there on the surface, but then it, turned, it became a high pressure as it went up. So depending on what slice of this atmosphere I'm looking at, I may have different movements, different flow patterns for the high and low pressure systems. All right. Uh, isotherms, we already did that one. That's where I got uh, areas of equal pressure, or correction, areas of equal temperature. Isotax, US low level significant weather prognostic chart. Prognostic is just a fancy word for something that's going to happen in the future, a prediction of what's going to occur in the future. Freezing levels, high level significant weather prog chart or prognostic chart. Again, a forecast. It's all, when I see prog chart, all I, all I hear is forecast. Convective outlook chart, national convective weather forecast, graphic winds aloft. Okay, we don't have to read exactly what's going on there with that over 100. Uh, but finding your exact direction is fun. Current icing product, forecast icing product, and volcanic ash. So let's see what we have available to us. Here's a surface analysis. We looked at one example of this on weather theory on yesterday. And they had isobars, areas of equal pressure, high center pressure, low center pressure. I know I could determine what the pressure gradient is along these lines as they're closely spaced together. That means faster winds. And I also know that going from high pressure to low pressure, the winds are moving parallel to the isobars and 90 degrees to the right. All right. So if I got high pressure here, it moves to the low pressure. But that flow is moving parallel to the isobars. Okay, so just a quick surface analysis chart, and that's all this is. Uh, it, oh, excuse me. Additionally, it does show me my fronts, which is not eh, somewhat kind of easy to see, but it does show me my uh, boundary areas or my fronts. Do I have a cold front or a warm front? How do I know cold front and warm front? Easy. Cold front's blue, warm front's red. What if it's not a color chart? That's easy too. Cold fronts, what kind of weather do I expect to have with cold fronts? Good or bad weather? Cold fronts are typically bad weather. Remember I said associate that with unstable conditions. So cold front have jagged teeth, okay? Warm fronts usually associated with stable conditions and somewhat good weather. Might be poor visibility, but a nice smooth ride so warm fronts are nice smiles and happy faces, okay? I know, I gotta try everything I can to make this work. Oh, right, here we go. Adds METARs. The METARs can be predict or can be portrayed on a, an entire map of some region. They used to publish this thing on an entire uh, 48 states. And it's called a weather depiction chart. They do the same thing now, but you do it on the graphics on the computer. You can zoom in or zoom out to wherever you want. Like here, I got Michigan right there. And I got a model for each and every single METAR. So hourly reports, these are all surface, or these are all observations. And I got a model that I can rapidly glance at and determine what's going on at that station. OK? 
okay? ISO bars, just a quick review. We know what these are. They're usually spaced at intervals of four millibars, each labeled with the pressure. Uh, pressure here, where is it at? Of course, they put a very large and everywhere. Ah, oh, there it is. There's one 1026, 1025, 1024. Uh, ISO bars that are close indicate a higher pressure gradient. Because the pressure changes over a shorter distance, resulting in stronger winds. So most of the winds across this entire map here are, are very light winds, except for when I get up here. High to low pressure, very close to that low pressure center, the winds are very, very fast. Now, really just fast here, let's ask the question, which direction are the winds moving around that low pressure system? Are they moving this way or are they moving this way? Oh, perfect, counterclockwise. And I know that I'm going from high pressure to low pressure, but Coriolis does something fun for me and it turns it 90 degrees to the right causes low pressures and have that counterclockwise motion. And the winds are very strong there. I got something else, I got a warm front, and it looks like I got a cold front coming across that warm front. So eventually it's gonna be an occluded front. Some sort of occlusion will occur here. They got some bad weather coming up, okay? All right, symbols. Symbols for these things. High, low, cold front, jagged teeth, warm front, smiley faces, stationary front, one going each way so they don't go anywhere. Occluded front, they're both going the same direction because one just overran the other one. A squall line, remember the squall line? A long, wide area of thunderstorms, severe thunderstorms. We had a squall line that we looked at yesterday. It was one of the pictures from outer space. Every, every now and then I put the picture from outer space up there and it looks exactly like it's from outer space. I don't know what they're trying to say. But that one was really nice and defined. Big, tall thunderstorms all the way across it. A trough, which is an elongated line of low pressure. A ridge, which is an elongated line of high pressure. And then a dry line. All right, looking through these symbols, a couple of things that I want to know right off the bat when I look at the, that uh, surface analysis is, Where's my high pressure? Where's my low pressure? Where are the fronts? What kind of fronts do I have, right? If I can gain that type of situational awareness right away, now I add just a little, little dash of where are the isobars and how far or close apart are they, and I understand my wind flows, okay? So rapidly here, I can gather a lot of information concerning that chart. Okay, let's take a look a little closer into that chart and find out each one of those station models and what's going on there. Each station model is depicted by a circle. The circle will have a filled in segment of it to describe the cloud coverage. Clear, few. Scattered was what? Almost a half, but not quite. Broken was more than a half. Breaks in overcast, that means I have an overcast layer and every now and then there's just a little break in it. Nah, you don't see that one too much. But I could see overcast. Obscured, so remember we said that there were, could be mountain obscurations? Okay, that means that I have a cloud, the mountain sticks up into this cloud and I could have the visibility there or the cloud coverage, the sky condition at that airport obscured by that cloud. Okay. It could be fog or ground fog, could be uh, volcanic ash, could be any kind of obscuration. And then missing or partial obscuration. Well, missing just means that the, the station needs repair and they didn't, it did not collect the data for the report. The report's gonna go out every hour whether they got it or not. But occasionally these things will break and you won't have any information there at all. It's very rare, it's not very often at all. Okay, a couple other of these uh, station plot uh, models. 
Mist, two lines. Fog, thicker mist, so three lines. Haze, eh, it kind of looks like an infinity symbol like that. Smoke, okay, that one a little bit makes sense. I can see that being smoke. Drizzle, rain, freezing drizzle. Anything with that little kind of uh, sideways S over it is freezing. Ice pellets, snow. If it's a shower, it'll look like an ice cream cone. Uh, you know, it's funny because I've talked this thing about being an ice cream cone for the longest time. But I've seen this sign in a couple of uh, uh, places that I go around here. And it has like, you know, no skateboarding, no smoking, no this, no that, no that. There's an ice cream cone. I can't eat ice cream here? And I think someone told me that means you can't eat. And I'm like, what? Oh, I thought I couldn't eat ice cream. <laughs> All right, so that shower, right? That, that's exactly, I've been calling this thing an ice cream cone for a while. Thunderstorm, eh, it kind of looks like a thunderstorm. So it almost looks like what it's supposed to be. Okay. All right. If I come over here and put all of this together, I can rapidly ascertain what's going on at that model, at that station. I know that I have three statute miles visibility because the three is off to the left of the station and it's italicized. I know that that's a result of rain. If there's two dots, eh, you know, it's one dot there's rain, two dots is a little bit heavier, three dots even worse, four dots heavier rain. So each more dot means more uh, that precipitation. The sky cover looks like it's uh, broken at 1,200 feet, ceiling and hundreds of feet. Now, if there's not a ceiling, if it's, if it's scattered or few, I'm not going to have this hundreds of feet down here. Okay. Again, here's what it looks like with the wind. The wind model shows the direction that the wind is coming from. Think about that being the tail of an arrow and it's moving in the direction of the wind. And for the long uh, little tabs on there or tick marks, that's 10. The shorter one's 15. Another example here, but a little bit more detailed is this is temperature shown in degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know why they wanted to do that. All right, I got two statute mile visibility in moderate uh, snow. 32 degrees for my dew point. There's the station identifier. Precipitation over the last six hour period is almost a half an inch. Pressure change ten tendency if it's climbing or de if I have higher or greater temperature, rising or falling temperatures. And then what kind of clouds? Typical station model includes only one type of cloud, right? And, and rarely any of this. A lot of these things I don't see too often. The type of clouds I don't see very often. Sea level pressure, temperature change, precipitation. But this is the full-blown model, okay? And again, it's a broken layer. Here's how it will look on the chart. And here's how all of a sudden this information becomes useful. Because we talked contours, and I think I know everybody is okay when I say contours. This chart does not have isobars. So nowhere on here does it show me areas of equal pressure. Instead, it has contours that either have shading or no shading. If for whatever reason I forget that for this chart, it's actually written right here. Areas with contours and no shading, like I have over here near Nassau, mean I have marginal VFR. Ceilings between 1,000 and 3,000, visibility from three to five. So not a fantastic day. As a private pilot, I might get a little sweaty coming in there, but I could probably make it. This will be all right. If the area has contours with shading, IFR. Less than a thousand mile, thousand mile, less than a thousand foot ceilings and or less than three statute mile visibility. So digging into each one of these, if I want to find out why exactly IFR conditions exist, well, I could see here, this looks like it's a uh, 500 foot ceiling overcast. 
right? Maybe I have some restricted visibility. I think that's one mile visibility, right? One and a half mile visibilities. All here, look, clear, 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 few, few, scattered. So this is all nice. These are nice areas to fly in. Look at Florida. That's about typical for Florida. You got broken at something, not marginal. This is pure VFR here. This one's broken at 25,000 with severe clear visibility, right? So nice day to fly. Okay, same thing. Weather depiction chart all the way across. Very, very clear. Few scattered, all up oh, IFR. Marginal VFR. See how I can instantly gather that information? This is great, except for the private pilot, the farthest that you're gonna go is from here to there. <laughs> so you're not gonna go very far. But you're not gonna be a private pilot forever. You might take a trip up to North Carolina. You're gonna go from here over to North Carolina. Well, I can instantly tell you today is not a VFR day. I might need to choose another route and some interesting way to get into North Carolina, depending on which part I'm going to, right? That's not that far of a flight. That's yeah, three, four, maybe make a fuel stop and go right on in. Easy day in a slow airplane, okay? All right, uh, one other interesting tidbit about these charts, they'll always have the name of them the issue time, the effective time, if it's different than the issue time, and also if there is a pressure level associated with that, where does this chart start and end? So this one is very easy, two-dimensional and it's on the surface. It's not gonna tell you that it starts at 400 millibars and goes up to whatever, no. But if it does have some sort of depth to it, Guaranteed, it'll describe right over here, where does this start and where does this end? All right. Radar. Radar is an observation, not a forecast. Same like what we just got over. Those are all models of observations. When they put the contour lines on the radar report, the radar report will show the first contour line as light to moderate. That confuses some pilots because when you see just one contour line going across, you think, oh, that's light precipitation. No, in a, in a black and white model, one contour line indicates light to moderate. The next contour line is heavy and the next one is extreme. Extreme breaks airplanes. Okay. All right. In a color chart, I get a wide range. Look at all these uh, lines here, or colors that I got right there. I get a wide range of colors, whether I have precipitation in the form of rain or snow or ice or whatever, right? I could loop this information. This is a, uh, this one here is just a paper, paper chart. This one is off the computer. I could loop this and then see over the past hour at six minute intervals, where is this weather for now? Where's all this precipitation moving? You know, And then I could form an opinion based on the trend. It won't show me where it would forecast to the future. Nope, these are observations. But I could look at the past 10 observations and get an idea where it came from probably which way it's going, right? Here's a, just a paper, black and white uh, ra radar report. NE just means no echoes. The radar went out, there was nothing that echoed back, so there's no precipitation. The first line, light to moderate, okay? Then it will tell me the direction of movement uh, here, it'll tell me where the tops of some of these things are, two, three, zero. So I got a, a good bit of information on that radar report. How high is the cloud? If there's precipitation coming out of it, chances are likely you're not gonna fly over it in the 172, okay? I, I gotta find a way to go around this or under and, and see where the uh, 
uh, see whether or not I can uh, maintain VFR going underneath of it. All right. Radar report on the left, mixed with some sort of surface analysis, low pressure, high pressures. I got uh, fronts, cold fronts, stationary fronts, and uh, warm fronts. On the right hand side, satellite, satellite imagery. Satellite imagery will tell me where's, where are the clouds at. Now, the visible satellite is only available during daylight hours. But it could give me a good idea of what's going on at that station or in that region with respect to clouds. Maybe I have no echoes, maybe I have no type of precipitation at all listed. But, like here, maybe over this area with Arizona and all that, I don't have any precipitation listed at all. There's still clouds. So where are those clouds? In, the, in Texas, and over Oklahoma and Missouri, well, I got plenty of clouds, plenty of precipitation, and I can see the clouds on the satellite. So overlaying these two products, I can form an opinion on what's going on depending on where I'm trying to fly. Okay, pressure analysis charts. This is gonna show me, based on the pressure, and I get an idea, 500 is usually 18,000. You get the surface analysis in the 500, the 18,000. This gives me an idea what's going on on different levels as I continue to climb through and as I continue to uh, track the pressure systems. This one has an 850 millibar chart, so 850, I'm at 5,000 feet. Represents altitude of 5,000. Solid line with notation 147 means the height of all points along this line is 1470. So right there, there's an isobar. The entire way across, 1470 meters. Whoever designed this one was on meters. They keep going all over the place with the units. Okay? And the isotherm labeled plus 15, isotherm, so thinking about, well, where is the same area of temperatures Constant pressure of 15 degrees Celsius, okay? <clears throat> Getting into the isotherm charts, and they will overlay my surface analysis chart, my low level prog, with isotherms to show me where are the freezing levels. I may have uh, you know, 20 degrees Celsius on the ground, but my freezing level could be only at 7,000 or 8,000, 9,000 feet. Okay, temperature dew point. Remember we looked at that uh, temperature chart and the temperature and winds of law forecast and we had to do a little bit of funny math if the winds were over 100 knots or 100 knots and over. This shows me that I got wind direction reported to the nearest 10 degrees and five knots. So to the nearest 10 degrees and to the nearest five knots. Here, the wind is 300 at 75 knots. So 50, 60, 75, okay? Temperatures are reported as minus 14. Temperature dew point is reported to the nearest whole degree. The spread is three degrees. So minus uh, 17. Minus 17 degrees is my dew point, all right? Actual height of the constant pressure surface, 577. So 5,770 5, meters, a bit over 18,000 feet. And the previous 12 hour height change reported in tens of meters. I'm not gonna commonly use these reports, but it's just another way that I can receive weather information. And they can transmit information on where the wind's coming from. What's the temperature and dew point at that level? Not on the surface any longer. Remember all those observations, all those METARs were all, these are uh, station reports that are on the ground. This is a sounding report from a satellite with imagery that, that showed at that level, 5,770 meters, this is the weather phenomenon that they had. 
They used to release sounding balloons a long time ago. Once it released, that was it. It was gone. Had a whole lot of a whole package of of uh, uh, weather data and communication equipment. They put it on a balloon and send it up in the air, and the balloon would go up and go up and explode. The weather uh, device would fall to the ground and break. And they would use them all the time. Okay. Now they're doing it with satellite vehicles. Surface prog charts, cold occluded trough, warm stationary, fine. Gave me all my, all of my, uh, you know, legend right down here at the bottom. If I get in trouble using one of these charts, all I got to do, find the legend. It's probably going to tell you what you're looking for there. And ISO, uh, ISO bars, uh, areas of high pressure, low pressure. I got a, looks like rain shower. Uh, maybe a snow shower. That triangle tells me it's a shower. A couple areas of precipitation there. A four panel chart, which used to be one of my favorites, but they've taken it away. They haven't done away with this report completely, but they've done away with putting all four of them together in one paper. So I get this chart, that chart, this one, and this one all separately. They used to put them all together on one page. And all I have here is a low level, meaning from the surface to 400 millibars, uh, roughly 22,000 feet. This is the weather phenomenon you'll see for the next 12 hours. And this is the weather phenomenon you'll see for the next 24 hours. In the same area, from the surface to about 22,000 feet. On the surface and not above the surface for the next 12 hours, you see this. Well, we've been looking at these charts for a while. We've already looked high pressure, low pressure, where's the precipitation, where are the ISO bars at, how close are they together, all right, all this stuff. But look at the information I get at that top one. I get Ceiling less than a thousand feet, visibility less than three. So this tells me IFR conditions, and it's colored red on the color chart. This one that's scalloped, okay? This one is marginal VFR, okay? Anywhere I see that is all marginal VFR. So all across here, marginal VFR. Here, IFR. There, IFR. Moderate or greater turbulence. All inside there, moderate or greater. One notch, so moderate, because it's not going to show me light turbulence, from 16,000 feet and below. There's the freezing level at the surface or the freezing level above mean sea level. These are charts that I promise if you're getting, like I told you, this one here was kind of getting us used to the idea of reading these. If you're getting weather reports, in the United States, and you want to start reading this stuff, you'll use these charts. Okay, that's one of the charts that you'll see on a regular basis. Look at this stuff. At a glance, I know marginal VFR, IFR conditions. Here's my turbulence. There's where the turbulence exists. Moderate turbulence, 24,000 down to 18,000. Okay, I know that I have uh freezing level somewhere no i don't ah right here at the surface right there freezing level at the surface and then most of the time you'll see dashed lines that show freezing levels at some altitude above but these are really good charts and at a glance i know if i'm flying today from fort lauderdale to oklahoma i better bring some instrument charts with me okay that tells me that right now it's actually kind of a fun day, unless you're a VFR pilot. There's the legend, like I said. Remember this one, that one bump means moderate turbulence, because you'd think it's light, but that's the entire United States, so you'd have light turbulence all over if that was the case. Okay, marginal VFR, IFR, any questions about that? Easy. This chart you will use a lot. Turbulence, 12,000 feet below. Same thing. What kind of turbulence? 
moderate turbulence, 12,000 or below. There's the full chart that they used to give to us. Like I said, the four panel chart, but now we get each one of the charts in a full screen. Okay. All right, symbols and meanings. Snow, what kind of snow? Intermitt or intermittent and covering half or less of the area. I know it's half or less of the area because it's in a contour and it's not shaded in. Intermittent rain showers covering half or less of the area. Continuous rain covering more of half the area, more than half the area because it's shaded in. And the same thing here, rain showers, thunderstorms, more than half of the area because it's shaded in. All right, like I said, the ice cream cone is shower, so rain shower, snow shower. Thunderstorms, freezing gives me a little. Tropical storm, look at that, it's moving counterclockwise because that's a low pressure system. If it's a hurricane, it's filled in solid and it'll have a number associated with it. One, two, three, four, five, whatever category hurricane we have. Can't reinforce enough that this is moderate turbulence, especially if you're taking a written exam. That'll get pilots every time because answer A will say light. And oh yeah, that's it. Yeah. Severe turbulence, icing is shown like this. Rain, snow, drizzle. Okay. All right. Tropopause, getting back to a higher level chart. This one, flight level three zero, yeah, this is a high chart, all right? So a high chart, this shows me that the tropopause is at flight level three zero zero. The high pressure located at flight level five five zero. Low pressure, flight level four two zero. Just tells me real quick and at a glance, and I agree with you, we are not using this for our flights in the training program. But I need to start getting an idea of how to read tropopause, low pressure centers, high pressure centers. Uh, when do we have embedded thunderstorms? Well, I'll tell you right here, isolated embedded. What does isolated mean? Well, isolated less than a half or less than an eighth. Uh, occasional, if I see one with occasional, I have an occasional up there somewhere, I don't. But if it had an occasional, that would be an eighth to a, to a half, and frequent more than a half. Uh, volcanic ash looks like here, volcanic activity. If it was a tropical storm, it would list it. Uh, this one may be tropical storm Colina. I'm not sure if that's what they're trying to tell me, but I got a lot of information available there, and how does each one uh, how is each one depicted? What does isolated mean? An eighth. What does occasional mean? An eighth to a half. Frequent, more than a half. All right. Convective outlook. What is the convective outlook? The categorical convective outlook. What is that for me? Well, in, in this case, it's telling me that I have either some sort of thunderstorm, marginal slight, enhanced, moderate, or high chances of thunderstorms to occur. So depending on the likelihood of those three conditions to occur, they will give me a series of arrows or rays that occur. I have, before they were color, these things were all black and white, and if they just put the line there, I wouldn't know if they were talking about the entire nation or just this part on the inside. So that arrow indicated to me that I would read to the right hand side of that arrow. So I know wherever the arrow is, read to the right of it, that's where the area of concern is. And the same thing here with all of these arrows, read to the right of that arrow. It'll show me that I have either uh, some thunderstorm available, th some thunderstorm uh, probability, marginal, slight, enhanced, moderate, or high. If I'm planning a flight and this is issued then, valid there, this is today's categorical outlook. So it's probably for 1430 Zulu all the way to 1200 Zulu the following day. If I'm planning a flight to go into 
Mississippi or Alabama, uh, might want to second think this one. Unless I'm a scheduled air carrier, I just don't get a choice. They have to go. But if I'm flying for whatever reason by myself, just maybe plan that flight for tomorrow. All right. Another national weather forecast product de des describing where those areas of uh, heavy thunderstorms are. And turbulence reporting criteria. Where are we at? We're close. This is good. Please spend some time appreciating this slide. This is the intensity, light, moderate, severe, extreme. Okay? I, very few pilots have ever encountered an extreme turbulence. Okay? Flight can, you probably have an immediate and by the most expeditious means possible uh, report to the NTSB after you encounter extreme. But here's your aircraft reaction. Here's the reaction inside the aircraft. Lots of words, right? Words. That's what, when I hear the pilot get on the radio and they go, well, I got out of this and that, and they're on the radio for three minutes, it seems like forever. You just got a lot of words. Well, that's what I got here, a lot of words. Turbulence momentarily causes slight erratic changes in altitude or attitude. Okay, or slight and somewhat rhythmic. So this is light turbulence, that's light chop. That's an actual report. Moderate, similar to light, but greater intensity. Okay? Similar to light chop, but greater intensity. Look at severe. Turbulence that causes large, abrupt changes in altitude and or attitude. Usually causes large variations in indicated airspeed. Aircraft may be momentarily out of control. Severe turbulence, that's, that's a very, that is an urgent pilot report. Okay? That triggers a lot of different things that have to happen with ATC and flight service station. Extreme, turbulence in which the aircraft is violently tossed about, practically impossible to control. So I really doubt anyone had extreme turbulence. What happens inside the airplane? May feel a slight strain against the seat belts or shoulder harness. Slight strain. I feel that as I accelerate and brake coming to work in the car, right? Occupants feel definite strains against the seat belts, shoulder harnesses. Unsecured objects are dislodged. As I had my iPhone sitting over here on the console and it fell down. No big deal. Food service and walking is difficult. We've, we've been on flights like this, okay? Severe, occupants are forced violently against seat belts or shoulder straps. Unsecured objects are tossed about. Food service and walking is impossible. And it doesn't even give me a reaction inside the airplane for extreme because the people inside there are probably dead or dying, all right? Because the airplane's falling apart. All right, so that's your turbulence reporting criteria. Wind and temperature data. There's a wind, there's how high it is, right? In 10s, 10, 20, 30, 10, 25, 10, 25. You guys seeing that? I got one long line is 10, another long line is 20, and that shorter line is five. And then this number next to it tells me the middle digit of the true direction. So I know for sure the middle digit of that true direction is four. Is it zero four zero? Nope. Is it one four zero? Yep. Is it two four zero? Nope. Is it three four zero? Nope. You only get four different selections that you can go through. Right? You guys follow me on that one? I know it's close. I know it's where I'm with almost eleven o'clock. We're right there. But that'll tell me that it's 120, 130, 130, 140, 150. I know that because the winds are coming from that direction, right? Okay. Well, excuse me, I'm saying it backward. 140, hell, it's coming from, it's reported from. You guys, uh, it's late. 340, okay? So you see which way it's coming from, my apologies. The way that it's coming from, that's a 340. 340, 320, 340, okay? The other number that's underneath there, this is my temperature. Temperature seven, uh, minus eight. 
Uh, what do I got there? It looks like not, these are just different. Um, no, that's not mine. That's MOB. All right, and TO7. Usually they'll give me some, some temperatures on there. I don't know why they're not giving me temperatures on there. But, well, they're changing my slides a little bit. Not a big deal. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's a negative. I don't know why they're doing that. If you look in the advisory circular, and I know this didn't either, either they've changed it with ADDS or, or the advisory circular or not. They used to give me two numbers with this thing. And that was, that first one was the direction that it came from. They'd give me another one for my temperature. But I'm with you there too. Let's, let's circle back around on that one first thing tomorrow. I'll let you guys know what's going on with this temperature. Okay. Icing, pro it's military, thank you. That was, all, that was a military chart. All right, icing probability and icing severity. It gives me a color chart now where I can determine what's going on with my icing and how will I expect to collect icing on the airplane. Ceiling and visibility is another report that came out recently and it just gives me a color code. Nice, easy color code. Do I expect VFR conditions? Do I expect uh, IFR conditions, marginal, low IFR conditions. And then gives me a couple of watches there for severe weather watches. Whether there's a, a hurricane or a tornado, usually a hurricane have its own, it's a hurricane watch, but a tornado or any type of damaging hail or water spouts or anything else. Okay, and they'll watch them going all the way through. This particular chart gives you Airmets, SIGMETs, convective SIGMETs, and convective outlooks all in one chart. So here, this is a, this is a convective SIGMET. It's got the little thunderstorm in it, but it hasn't become a SIG, or, uh, or this, excuse me, it's a convective outlook, hasn't become a convective SIGMET yet because it's not turned red. All right, and I don't have a tops listed. This is the top of that convective segment. So this particular storm goes up to flight level 450. And it exists and it happens right here. Everything outside of this was that convective outlook we were talking about. And this is covering all of Florida. And it covers all of Florida on a daily basis. If I see this lighter colored uh, shade with, with the thunderstorm, I can still fly. That's fine. When you see this dark red shade over here with the thunderstorm and you see numbers that show how high this thunderstorm is, they are currently tracking an active storm cell there. So this means don't fly. It could be an embedded thunderstorm. The weather forecasters and the weather, ob the weather observers are watching this thing on their equipment, on their radar. But I might not be able to see it. And if I, if I didn't see it or if I did see it, either way, I get inside, that causes severe damage or potentially damaging the airplane. Have these classes in Sky Eagle Aviation Academy. Check out please our website www.atp.academy for details. Okay, sources of, I know we're there, we're going to be done with this. Sources are, key terms, a couple things. 
For the sources, how do I get this information? That's all it is. That very first slide that we had today in this chapter on section A, relatively quick, hey, this is how they do forecasts. Well, this is how you get the information delivered to you as well. You get the information delivered to you, there's my favorite. 1-800-WEATHERBRIEF.COM. Start getting the information now. Start downloading the information. Start reading the information now so you can become familiar with it. Okay? If I get one of these reports, if I get one of these weather reports and these flight briefs, I can register for updates and they'll text me my updates. So as I'm getting the airplane ready to fly and as I'm waiting on the passengers to show up, if there's any updated information, it'll give it to me. Okay? I could call him on the phone, as you can see our happy guy right here doing. And he's getting adverse conditions, VFR flight. Call him on the phone and write all the stuff down. Okay? ADDS, we were looking at that one earlier. This is where you get just piecemeal weather. A lot of those weather reports that we were looking at on the previous slides, those are all weather reports coming from ADDS. Not a comprehensive brief, but just I pick the report I want to look at and I can look at it there. Flight service station is another way to get the weather delivered to me. I can get it from 122.4 here calling the Huron flight service station or Huron radio. And I can listen to HIWAS which is just a repeat broadcast, it's a tape. It's just a, a message, a recording that plays over and over and over and tells me exactly, it describes SIGMETs, AIRMETs, any type of hazardous weather, uh, hazardous in-flight weather service. And this is exactly what one of these ASOS or AWOS systems would look like. What, what I get from that, ob from that mechanical observation what I get from that, all those computers come from something that looks similar to this. If it has an open tower, they're going to assign a couple of things. They're going to assign a runway that's in use, an approach that's in use, and notice to airmen. If there's not a tower there or the tower is closed, then it's going to just become the AWOS or the ASOS. The automated weather observation system, a voice synthesizer just spits out the information over and over and over again. Every time it broadcasts, it updates, so it's constantly updating. All right? Another way I get the information, same information from the FIS B, right through the GPS. And it'll, it'll give me radar, uh, it'll give me enhanced track radar or uh, terrain, this one's a terrain service and also weather strikes for uh, lightning. Because I might have rain in front of me, I might have heavy rain in front of me or moderate rain. If there's no lightning associated with it, there's no thunderstorm. The more lightning I have, the worse the thunderstorm. So once I start seeing lightning like this, it's time for me to alter my course one way or another. All right? Okay, as promised, that's it. And there's a stage two exam. So everybody please take the stage two exam. And when you're finished with the stage two exam, read ground lesson 11, which is guided flight discovery chapter eight. Also with the pilot handbook aeronautical knowledge chapter 11, the AFM and POH. I only have one AFM that here in, in hand. I encourage you to download the Cessna 172 November model POH online. And then ground lesson 12, which is chapter nine, pilot handbook of aeronautical knowledge 16. I owe you guys a good explanation on that winds aloft chart. And aside from that, any other 